last couple of classes we have been looking at uh, the numerical methods to calculate integrals of a function that is we want to evaluate uh, the integral of a function uh, which is uh, between the limits a to b f of x dx and we call that as i of f so that's what we have been looking at so we have been looking at a calculation of uh, this quantity f of x dx as of uh, uh, for any function f. Okay. So, we looked at various methods for doing uh, such uh, integral okay. and some of them I will just summarize here is one is the what is called the rectangular rule, rectangle rule. Okay. So, in this uh, rule we wrote we approximate the function uh, i the, the, the integral of the function by uh, the function evaluated at one point multiplied by the whole interval b minus a. Remember b and a are the limits of this integral. So, it is integral a to b and then we evaluate the function at the first point a and then multiply it by the interval b minus a. So, that is one method which we learned. And then uh, another method again which involved evaluating the function only at one point which is now in the in between a and b that is a plus b by 2 and multiplying it by the interval b minus a. So, that is again another approximation we call that as a midpoint rule. These are two methods which involve evaluating the function value at one point and then there were other methods which is uh, involved for evaluating the function at two points and one is trapezoidal rule. In the trapezoidal rule we approximate the integral of the function in the interval a to b by f of a plus f of b that is evaluated at the two ends divided by 2 into the interval b minus a. So, this is three uh, methods which we looked at uh, uh, using uh, called the rectangle rule, midpoint rule and trapezoidal rule. These are all of uh, methods which are pol uh, polynomial of, uh, of order 0, okay, approximation to polynomial of order 0. And then we looked at this first two methods of polynomial of order 0 and this is 0th order polynomial, this first order polynomial and then we looked at the next order polynomial which is the Simpson's rule. So, now that involves uh, evaluating the function at uh, three different points that is f of a, f of b and f of a plus b by 2. Now, we will evaluate the function at the two ends and also in the middle and then write the formula for the integral as b minus a by 6 and f of a plus 4 f of a plus b by 2 plus 4 b. So, all these methods uh, are the common feature as you can, as you can notice is just that it is a big the integral become a summation over a few points, uh, function evaluated at a few points multiplied by some appropriate weight factor. So, all of them actually writes it as uh, some w i f of x i. Okay. So, in the first two methods uh, we had only one point and then we had uh, the second uh, the trapezoidal rule at two points and the Simpson's rule at three points. So, these are all. So, all these methods reduces this into f, an in integral will finally become something like w i f of x i summed over i. So, that is what the, the method finally would become okay. so all, all of them. Okay. So, now we look at some uh, actual uh, a, uh, a program which actually implements of this rule with various different rules as rectangle rule, midpoint rule, trapezoidal and uh, Simpson's rule. 
and compare get, get an idea about the accuracy of this methods. So we look at the function of the form uh, f uh, equal to x squared uh, e to the power of minus 2x some function of this form okay. and then we will e evaluate the integral uh, the i of f will be interested in is uh, integral the limits are 0 to 1 0 to 1 x squared e to the power of minus 2x dx okay that's what we our interest would be to calculate this so let's first uh, plot this uh, function and then uh, look at uh, so here is i'm just trying to plot this function uh, between the interval 0 to 1 okay x squared e to the exponential of minus 2x okay and uh, between the interval 0 to 1 so that's what i'm going to plot so that's that's a plot so the function is like this okay that's my functional form so so you have uh, some form like this i will draw that here again uh, okay so you have uh, x well, this f of x and we are from 0 to 1 which is integral and it, it, it goes like something like this okay so that's what uh, it's it, that's the form of that uh, that function okay, approximately it's just this, this way okay. so now we want to integrate the function from 0 to 1 okay. and using one of the methods which we have just uh, seen okay so so we'll go back to that uh, thing so we are going to use one of these methods. So first, let's start with uh, the trapezoidal rule. So that is saying i of f is b minus a into f of a. Okay. So in the first rule, we are going to use as trapezoidal rule, in which we would write it as i of f as b minus a approximate i of f by b minus a into f of a. So now, as I said earlier, uh, that it's uh, this. If you, this is actually approximating the area under this curve by just a rectangle right as you can see you evaluate f of a and b minus a so f of a is 0 here so if you just evaluate just uh, only at this point and then take this integral you will get uh, obviously a completely wrong answer that this integral will be 0 right because uh, the function is this so it is evaluated at a equal to 0 because our interval is now uh, sorry uh, a is uh, 0 and b is 1 so if I evaluate this function uh, at a equal to 0 then uh, at x equal, to, uh, x equal to a it is going to get 0 so we are getting obviously a wrong answer okay so, and we know the area under this curve is not 0. So and uh, so what we are going to do is to uh, break this up so the, the limit the, 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 the trivial limit that is where we take the whole the whole interval 0 to 1 as just 1 let me just mark this as 1 the whole interval 0 to 1 as just 1. Uh, one quantity and then uh, and then evaluate this integral gives us a wrong answer so then we have to look we, we can split this into two or two equal intervals let's say we will split this into you know b minus a by 2 and uh, and then do this separately so that we can do right so that is we split this interval a to b uh, by two intervals and then apply the rectangular rule for each of these intervals that is I would write i of f now. Okay, i of f I will now write as uh, one goes from uh, a plus b by two to f. So I will have this going from a plus b by two to so a. So that is uh, a plus b by two minus a as the first interval, and the function evaluated at a, and then I have uh, you know b minus a plus b by two and the function evaluated it a plus b by 2 okay. so that this trapezoidal this uh, uh, rectangular rule i split it into two okay one so two intervals and then i'll get now i can see that again this part will be zero because f of a is zero but this part would be this part would be non zero which would be the area of this it will be area of this rectangle so again there is error because obviously this whole uh, area is left out so you have this error but then we can improve the accuracy by splitting up this into more and more intervals that is what we are going to look at. So we look at how the uh, how in the limit as in what limit how, how many intervals we need to get a realistic answer to this integral that is i of f 0 to 1 x squared e to the power of minus x dx. So the question to ask is that if I use 
simple rectangular rule okay, and evaluate this integral how many intervals I need means how many breakups I should do for this whole interval 0 to 1 uh, how many breakups I should do to get a realistic answer. The realistic answer turns out to be 0.80831. So we know the actual answer is 0.80831 to this. So we will see how we would how many points which we have to use to get that answer. Okay, so that is uh, something which you would be looking at. So we look at the program which implements that rectangular rule. Okay, so here is a, a small program. Which, uh, so this program has uh, uh, it, this program actually asks for so it has some it, it tabulates the points at x x okay x is our the number of points which in which we are going to evaluate the function. That means uh, it's equal to the, the dimension of that should be equal to the interval a to b divided by the number of points, which number of divisions which we want. Okay, so that many points we are going to evaluate this uh, function. So we are going to take the whole interval a to b and we are going to split up that into some number of divisions and then you use the rectangle rule for each of these divisions. Okay, that is the method which you should be looking at. Okay. So this program uh, it to be given an upper limit to the integral and a lower limit to the integral. We are given that as 0 and 1 already. Okay. So here in the declaration of the variables I have already fixed the these values. As these values have already been given. Okay, they are floating points, and but also given the values. So upper limit is one, and lower limit is zero. And then x is an, uh, a pointer as here, and uh, it's it's going to be in our array. So it, before I put in the variables into that, I need to allocate some memory to that. So I use this uh, a malloc function to allocate uh, memory to that. That's here. So x has been allocated some memory using this malloc function. So let's go into a little detail of that here. Okay, so uh, I will have. Uh, I'm I'm just printing out the upper limit and lower limit here. So I'll ignore this particular statement. It's just printing out the upper limit and lower limit. Okay, and then here uh, it asks this program asks for the number of points you want to use. That is the number of divisions you want to use. The number of points at which you want to evaluate the function. Okay, so you enter that here. Okay, so that minus one will be the number of divisions. So the number of points you want to evaluate the function at, and that will be read off from the screen as a number of n points. Okay, n points is the number of points at which we want to evaluate the function. Okay, so that's uh, in this interval we were just splitting this into many intervals. Let's say, right? So each of this interval. So now I will label this as x i. Okay, so x i, x x zero, x one, x two, x three, etc. Okay, that's the number of points you want to evaluate. So in this particular graph, now I have drawn there is one, uh, one, two, three, four, five points at which I am evaluating this. Okay, so that's the number of points, and once you're given the number of points, that many points I have to store in the x variable, right? The x is my array which has this x, x zero, x one, x two, etc. But x is uh, declared as a pointer, so now I need to allocate memory to that before I put in some values into it. So that is here. Okay, so. Uh, number of points plus two into size of uh, float is the memory I have to because it's a, x is a floating point, so I need to allocate memory to that. We have seen this malloc function. Here is the use of that malloc function to allocate memory to this x. Okay, so then uh, now I have the xp is my interval, so I'm dividing this into equal intervals. Okay, this interval, this whole uh, whole uh, distance zero to one, I'm going to divide them into equal intervals. Okay, so I'm just going to Say that it is uh, the interval distance is upper limit minus the lower limit divided by the number of points. That's the uh, interval. Then we have xi values. Xi values are then lower limit plus i. I go from zero to n points. I lower limit x of i plus uh, x of i is equal to lower limit plus i times the interval. Right. So when i equal to zero, it's x of i is zero. So x of i starts from zero, and when i is n points. That is i is the number of points, and then uh, this is equal to the upper limit, right? Because xp is at upper limit minus lower limit by n points. So if I substitute that here, you see that at n points it is upper limit, and i equal to n points it is the upper limit, and i equal to zero it is the lower limit. So x of i goes from lower limit to the upper limit in n point in xp interval, 
using end points okay so that's what it is and now up up to this it should be this part of the program this whole code up to this should be common for all methods uh, we are going to uh, mention here that is uh, the rectangular rule the bit point rule the trapezoidal rule and uh, the simpsons rule all of this will use the same uh, part the same program for all this except except the last part where we actually compute the the the, the integral that is uh, this part when we actually compute this part we would uh, change the uh, change the part okay so now here let's say we have put an end point equal to 1 okay there is only one whole the whole thing is just evaluated only at one point okay then this will be basically zero right because x of i is uh, zero and we will know that it is this integral will be zero because f of a will be zero so now we'll see what the accuracy we will run this program so you can see that here what i am doing is i am just writing the xp that's the interval okay now if if my end point is one the xp is just whole whole of b minus a right? otherwise it's b minus a by end points Okay, so each interval, so this is, this is uh, the length of each interval multiplied by the function. The function is x square. That's power. I uh, using this power function, which is a built-in uh, in the program part, built-in function in the in the math library. That is, it calculates the x to the power two, and exponential another built-in function that is minus two into x i. Okay, so x squared exponential minus two x i. So that's what I'm computing here. Okay, and I just sum the sum up all this uh, quantities. Okay. So I basically reduce that into the sum. Okay. So b minus a is now split into b minus a by n points, and f of a is evaluated at h of that starting points, and then it becomes a sum. Okay, so it becomes a w i uh, f of x i kind of sum. Okay, so it will become a sum like this. That's what I have, I have done. Where w i being just b minus a. So it's a simple weight. The weight is simply b minus a divided by the number of points okay, that, that's the weight w i in this case is okay that's what we see here okay, and then i just print out the answer at the end so the, this loop which computes that sum is over here and then uh, i just print out the answer here okay that's that's the program is okay then let's look at this program let's just run this and then this is a rectangular rule and minus l m because i'm using all those math library functions uh, like exponential and uh, power etc so i need that so i run i compile that and now i run the program so now upper limit is 1 it's printing out that here the upper limit is 1 and the lower limit is 0 okay that's what it's printing out and it's asking for the number of points you want to uh, evaluate number of intervals you basically number of points you want that's uh, the the splitting you want so let's let's put it as so let's say uh, 5 okay so we get the answer to be Point zero six seven two seven zero. So five values which we evaluated the function, and we are getting it as point zero six seven two seven zero. While uh, we know the correct answer is point eight zero eight three one. You can you can do this analytically. You can see that this point eight zero eight three one is the correct answer to this equation, as to this integral. Okay, so we have to obviously we have to increase the number of points. So we just increase it to ten. Okay, so we go from 0.067 to 0.74 and uh, we go into uh, 20 uh, so we get 0.77 uh, we go into 100 points and then we get 0.801 so we are slowly approaching the correct answer but we have already split this whole interval into 100 sub intervals uh, to get the to reach that answer we have still have an error in the second third decimal places okay. So we need to get 0 0.808. We are still at 0 0.801 at 100 sub intervals. So we go something like 200. Uh, we still have an error in the third decimal place in this here. Okay, this is 0 0.804. A 0 0 0.0804. Sorry, fourth decimal place. 0 0.0804. Well, the answer is 0 0.08. Sorry, the answer is 0 0.08. Uh, uh, 0, 08 that's what the answer which you should get so we saw that uh, if you use uh, the simple uh, rectangular uh, rectangle rule and split this interval even if in, even into 100 uh, sub intervals we are still uh, very far from the actual answer uh, to this uh, 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 to this interval which is which the integral which should be 0 0.08031 
so it will take it takes us a lot of uh, function evaluations uh, and uh, and the sum uh, to get this integral correctly in the, if you use a simple rectangle rule okay so now let's do the same thing okay using a midpoint rule so okay now we will use uh, b minus a into f plus f into a plus b by 2 okay so again now we'll use the next one that is we'll use function value evaluated at f plus a b by 2 okay so that's what we're going to use in the in the midpoint rule so that means now uh, we're going to evaluate for each sub interval the function evaluated at the middle of that interval and then we'll do the exactly the same calculation and then we'll see uh, what happens okay so now here is the program which would uh, use a midpoint uh, rule so it's the same same program no not uh, very different the, the top part is exactly the same okay and now only the, as i said the where we exactly actually calculate the sum that is where the change is s equal to 0 to in a, before the loop and inside the loop you will take the number of points and then evaluate the the sum of all the uh, function products okay that is xp multiplied by the function value now the function value now there is a change here the function value is not evaluated at x of i now okay now i'm taking x of i plus x of i plus 1 by 2 okay. so i want to keep this uh, thing as a constant that is what we give is the number of points at which uh, the function is evaluated okay say so when i say n points that is the number of points at which the function is evaluated that's what we are going to give okay and then we are going to use this rule okay so now when i when i so again i evaluate let's say at uh, five five points okay now i'm going to take this as an interval and that as another interval okay because i need to evaluate this at f, f of a plus b by 2 okay so i'm going to do this as an interval and that as an interval okay so actually uh, when i again i need i calculate the function at 0 x1 x1 x0 x1 x2 x3 x4 okay and then I will evaluate the function at every alternate points. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do here. Okay. So I've evaluated x of i plus x of i plus one by two. Okay. That's, uh, sorry, in the middle of every interval. Okay. So I take this interval and I evaluate the function at this in the middle of that interval. Okay. So when I say here uh, the number of intervals is ten, it's actually we are evaluating the function only at five different points. Okay. So now let's look at this this point. So that's uh, f of a so that is interval b minus a that is for each interval that is x p now that is b minus a divided by n points and the function evaluated here at uh, the midpoint that is x of i plus x of i plus 1 by 2 power 2 right that is x squared exponential minus 2 x of i plus x of i plus 1 by 2 okay so that is I have written that that way okay so that is exactly the this so if i write this in this form i'm writing this function now as uh, this one so function is uh, x of i x i plus x i plus 1 by 2 you can see it so it is x i plus x i plus 1 by 2 the whole square right that's x squared and e to the power of minus 2 uh, so uh, x i plus x i plus one by two. That is x of i. So that is. Okay. So that's what I'm evaluating here. I've written at that. Okay. You could cancel this two and two, but I just for clarity, just to sh uh, show you that this is actually evaluated at the midpoint between this interval i and i plus one. Okay. That's where I'm evaluating the function. So we will we'll run this program. So before we do that, we will uh, we will make two different uh, output files as we compile the the rectangular method, the method we were using by rectangular uh, method. So that program we will compile as and and, and store it as REC. Okay. So that so when you run uh, REC, then I am running a rectangular uh, uh, method. Okay. Now similarly. I will do the midpoint uh, method and then I compile that and keep as uh, MID. Okay. So if I run dot REC then that means I am running the rectangular method and if I run dot uh, MID uh, then I am running the midpoint method. So if I run dot REC and run it with 5 points I get the answer as 0 0.067270 while I should be getting as uh, we have seen that 0 0.083. 
831 831 that's what the answer should be so and then we now run the midpoint uh, program which is again we we'll use the five points actually we are when you are saying five, five points here we are evaluating actually the function at less than five points but we use the same thing here five points and then we get a, a an accuracy much better than the than the rectangular rule so you can see that by simply going to a midpoint rule uh, we have a much higher accuracy and we have seen the reason for this this is actually of order the second derivative of the function this error in the in the midpoint rule okay so if you run uh, rec up to 100 in the in the 100 points then we get 0.80 801 we should get 0 0.0808 point 0808 is the answer we getting point 0801 while uh, just running five points using the midpoint we are already at point 0808 so there's a tremendous improvement in the in this uh, accuracy by just going to a midpoint method and now uh, for this particular function and now uh, we look at the next method that's a trapezoidal rule in which we now use uh, two points uh, at which the function is evaluated so we now use b minus a by 2 and f of a plus f of b by 2 that uh, f of a plus a f of b so now we are going to evaluate the function at two points again two points in each interval so i will again split this uh, function into i'll split this function into many intervals and at each interval i will evaluate at two points in this rule okay so that's what going to be the the trapezoidal rule uh, implementation so let's look at that uh, again so here is a program which does that uh, trap, uh, trapezoidal so that's so this program again the initial part is the same you have end points at which it has to be evaluated the number of intervals etc so now here i change this now i need to evaluate for each interval xp and xp by 2 so at the end of this thing i have a by 2 here sitting okay so uh, so you can see that here i divide that by 2 the function uh, so uh, i have now uh, xp multiplied by the function value at xi and then plus the function value at xi plus 1 so the two inter two power function values so one is uh, at xi another is xi plus 1 so let's change this thing a little bit so i will now write this in the case of it's a trapezoidal rule i'm going to write this uh, the program what it does is to compute f for the int, uh, i as uh, i of f is now computed as sigma i uh, x i squared uh, f so exponential of minus 2 x i uh, plus x i plus 1 squared exponential minus 2 x i plus 1 okay in the interval x i plus 1 minus x i by 2 so that's our trapezoidal rule okay that's going to be our trapezoidal rule that's what we are going to use and each of this for many intervals x i okay so that's what's done here okay so you have uh, this function Uh, evaluated at uh, x i and x i plus one, okay, and multiplied by the d x x p by two. X p is x i plus one minus x x i, and divided by two is here. Okay, that's what we're going to run. Okay, so let's run this. Okay, so let's call that uh, when we uh, when we compile that now. Uh, so let's let's call that as uh, trap. Okay, so that will be if you run trap, that's we're running trapezoidal rule. Okay, so let's run that, and we get. Uh, let's use again five points. So we get 0.80803. Okay, so compare that with the uh, midpoint uh, for five points, and we get 0.80855. Okay, so that that's comparable. Okay, so uh, we see that we are not getting much higher accuracy by going to trapezoidal rule and using the same five point uh, integration. so far we looked at three different methods that is uh, rectangle rule midpoint rule and trapezoidal rule so now we look at uh, the the simpson's rule okay so that is uh, that where we have three function values evaluated so we have f of xi and if you have x of f of xi plus xi plus 1 by 2 and f of xi plus 1 so then we'll use three function values okay and they have different weights now so now this is i guess the first time 
we are actually using function of different weights. So here again we use function values at two points, but both of them have the same weight. But now here we have uh, this function, this function value, this point has a different weight. It's four times b minus a by six. Well, this is b minus a by six, and this weight is b minus a by six. Okay, so now that's the, that program which does the Simpson's rule is here again similar to this one. Okay, except for the last part. Okay, so here is the the part. Now we have to evaluate the function at x i. That's the first part here. Okay, so x p by uh, six at six here. So x by x p by three. So that is uh, this is a function evaluated at uh, uh, x at x i, and then there's a function evaluated at uh, x i plus one. Right? That is. Uh, uh, and then you have a function evaluated at x i plus two. That's what I'm using. So x i. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this interval like this, okay? And I'm say that this is one interval, and I evaluate the function at zero, uh, x two, and x one. Okay, so zero, x one, and x two like that. Okay, instead of using the x i plus two and x i minus two, so I'm just using the zero, x one, and x two kind of stuff. That's what. So three points. Okay, I need to evaluate the function at three points. I do that as x i. X i plus one and X i plus two. Okay, that's that's splitting this into three different uh, three in three different points at which you, to which you have to evaluate the the function. So remember uh, the the quantity. The, co the point is this: it is f of a plus four f of a plus b by two and f of b. Okay, that's b minus a by six. Okay, so now I my interval has become two here. Okay, so that is why I have over here X of i. I put in here divided by three because my actual interval b my this is actually x of i minus x of i plus two minus x of i, okay. So that is while x p is x of i plus one minus x of i, so I have to put divide multiply this by divide that by multiply that by two. So that's what it is become three. Okay. So let me write that here. This is what I'm going to do here. I of f now is evaluated in the following form. I am writing it as x of i. So I need an interval. So it is x of i plus two minus x of i. That's my interval. I'm using, and then I'm evaluating the function at f of x i. Okay, and then I have uh, uh, here four times f of x i plus one, and then I'm evaluating it at x i plus two. Okay, so that's a, that's the Simpson's rule I'm using here. Okay, where f F is given by each point given by this. Okay, so is x. So while my d, my the dx which I was using was x i plus one minus x i. Okay, so this is actually two times dx. Okay, so actually this divided by six. So this will be two times dx by six. That is dx by three. Okay, that's what I put in here. This program or dx x p here. I divide by three. Okay, so now let's run this. Okay, so when I say now here uh, again the number of points at which the function is evaluated. Is what we are going to give in the program, okay? So and then we are going to run this. So we'll now compile this program. We call it simp. Uh, we'll run simp. We'll run with five points, okay? And you have an accuracy of point zero four five four, okay? Now Simpson's rule. Uh, doesn't seem to give us very high accuracy, uh, but the number of intervals is of course small. Uh, so let's run it with ten points, and we get ten points reasonable accuracy. So now this is again five intervals. Okay, when I say ten points, it's actually five intervals because this is this is one interval for now. No, right? But the number of function, uh, number of points at which the function is evaluated is ten. Okay, but the intervals is fine. Okay, so. We see that uh, in terms of the uh, number of uh, points at which the function is evaluated, uh, this uh, in for this particular function, this doesn't seem to give us much more accuracy than the trapezoidal rule. Uh, but uh, if you look at the interval, then it is as uh, good as the trapezoidal rule, which we get for ten points. We get point eight zero point zero eight zero eight. So that's a simpler uh, methods where we actually split the function into the various in various intervals and then evaluated this function values and multiply them by the the distance between those intervals that's what all these methods rely on okay. so now let's go into the next set of rules which are the the gaussian rules right 
So now this uh, is something which we discussed in detail in the last class. Uh, that is, we will now evaluate the function uh, i of f. Now this is slightly different from the earlier methods because uh, we now evaluate the function i of f by writing i i of f as uh, this. Again, we use a similar. We use a similar. Finally, the inter the integral will reduce into this. But the uh, technique here is writing i of f as uh, uh, not instead of f of x dx, we could write it as a to b uh, g of x w of x dx, right? That's what this is a weight function here, w of x. This and then to distinguish this from this w, we call it a i here, okay? A of x i. Okay, so now this is some weight function. Now, depending upon this weight function and this limits, we had different uh, uh, orthogonality. orthogonality uh, uh, properties and so of the, of the polynomial and so we said that uh, we discussed that in the in the last class and we said we can have Legendre polynomial if it is minus 1 to plus 1 Chebyshev if it's minus 1 to plus 1 but we have a weight function 1 minus x square here the weight function is 1 and uh, uh, Lagua if it is uh, 0 to infinity and Hermite minus infinity to plus infinity etc. And all these methods, the idea is to approximate the function by a polynomial, okay, and then uh, do the integral. And the, finally, the integral will then reduce to to this form, okay. That is, the g function evaluated at x i multiplied by this particular polynomial, and this is Lagrange form for the polynomial approximation. So we write that in the Lagrange form, and then multiplied by g of x i. So, as I said, what we're going to do is we're going to approximate g by a polynomial. So in this method, g is approximated by p k of x, okay, and which is given by uh, sum over i going from zero to k, sum uh, product j going from zero to k j, not equal to i, right? Uh, x minus x j divided by x i minus x j into g of x i. Okay, so that's that's what the approximation. So g here, so we write the integral in this form, and then choose the appropriate w for depending upon the limits. Okay, and uh, uh, we write the polynomial. This this is approximated by a polynomial p, okay, which is given by this quantity. Okay, and that was the basic idea of this integral. And then the weights. Then we can write that as as a i g of x i and the weights given by the integral of this part right. So now the g of x i comes out of this integral because it is integral over dx okay. So it is only the function of x integral over x. The the, this is the only part which is a function of x so we can take that out. So then we can write this in this form with a of i given by this quantity okay. So now uh, we have seen that uh, the way to do uh, go about this is because of the uh, orthogonality properties of the matrices that if you want to get very high accuracy using this that is if I choose a kth order polynomial I can get accuracy up to 2k plus 1 order in derivative provided I choose these points right these points xj's at which the function is tabulated okay now the function has to be tabulated at some values and that tabulated points if I choose them as the zeros of a polynomial uh, depending upon what the limits and the w is okay so for example if it is uh, the limits were minus 1 to plus 1 and my weight function was here was 1 then i would use the tabulated points as the zeros of the legendre polynomial okay and similarly for other cases okay so so that's the that's a method so first part in this uh, thing would be to write the integral which you want to evaluate into this form in this one of these forms okay so we have to change the limits such that the limits are minus 1 to plus 1 and uh, we write that in this form. So that is what we had seen okay, in this particular example. For example, when we want to this, this is a particular function of interest right now we just want to evaluate this integral that is x squared e to the power of minus 2x okay, and then I have to change the limits of the integration from 0 to 1 from 0 to 1 to minus 1 to plus 1 and that I do by changing the, the variable from x to t by going from minus 1 to uh, from uh, x to uh, t that is t equal to minus 1 plus 2x 
and then I can write the integral now i as uh, 1 by 4 the minus 1 to plus 1 1 plus t whole square e to the power of 1 plus t dt okay. and then evaluate the function and the, this now this function is evaluated at various values of t and those values of t are the zeros of the Legendre polynomial because of my limit and the weight is 1 here. So that is the idea okay. now I hope this is clear. So we want to use the Gauss Legendre uh, method then this function this integral is first converted into minus 1 to plus 1 by a change of variable okay. and then this function here now 1 plus t square root of power of minus 1 plus t is tabulated at different values of uh, sorry at, at the zeros of the Legendre polynomial okay and the appropriate weight functions are calculated uh, using uh, using for example uh, this value. Okay, we do not use this value actually I will come to that a little later okay, but so that is we appropriate weight functions are calculated and the functions are evaluated at that point and we do a sum of all those functions. Okay, so now here is for example I summed over uh, four, uh, 4 points that is x0, x1, x2 and x4. So this x0, x1, x2 and x4 should be the first 4 zeros of a fourth order Lagrange of a uh, Lagrange polynomial okay, sorry Legendre polynomial. In the in the in this particular in this Gauss Legendre integration, which is f of x going uh, integral minus one to plus one, f of x dx with, with w equal to one. So it's just f of x dx or f of t dt in this particular case. Okay, that's what we want to look at. So uh, so remember that is uh, we so you can also incorporate that change of variables into the program itself. And now we want to evaluate in the program. Uh, in terms of x itself then what you could do is uh, instead of you, you could tabulate the t's as the zeros of the uh, Legendre polynomial and then evaluate this function at 1 plus x0 by 2 1 plus x1 by 2 1 plus x2 by 2 because the relation between x and t was uh, t equal to 1 minus 1 plus 2x or x is equal to 1 plus t by 2 is that that is also uh, possible right so that is what we have to uh, do okay. So now, now we come to the computation of the weight. Okay. So now we know where to choose the x to be. Okay. So now the functions are evaluated, tabulated at the zeros of the Legendre polynomial in this particular case. Because again, I repeat, because we are you going to use a minus one to plus one interval, and the weight is one here of the function. So now the question is, how do we? How am I going to compute this uh, this weight? Because this weight itself involves uh, an integral over minus 1 to plus 1 okay. So if I use this form this is not very convenient because uh, uh, I can uh, because I have to integrate this from minus 1 to plus 1 so this weight itself involves an integral so I will not gain much uh, advantage. But it is not so complicated because what we can do is uh, we can actually write uh, this particular function in terms of the Legendre polynomial itself okay and then uh, we write the w as in this form. So, so what we have seen so far is that we have to write it in this we can write it in this form and we said a i is now given by integral a to b right and uh, or in the particular in this case if suppose we converted the limits etc then it is minus 1 to plus 1 okay sigma for each of this and pi j going from 0 to k j not equal to i x minus x j divided by x i minus x j. Okay, so that is actually the weight which we have to compute okay, dx okay, that is what the weight which we have to compute. Okay, now this involves integration so that is not something which we want to do because our idea is to actually do another integral. So it does not make sense to compute the weights by doing another integration and then doing a sum. So we have to change this form okay, and uh, it turns out that this can be actually written as in terms of the Legendre polynomials whose zeros we have used here to tabulate the function value okay or this f of x i here is actually tabulated at the zeros of this uh, polynomial of this Legendre polynomial and in terms of the Legendre polynomial we can write this weight and this that turns out to be uh, 2 divided by 1 minus x i square into p k prime p k plus 1 prime of x i p k plus 1 prime of x i whole square okay. So now that is the derivative of the k plus 1th order Legendre polynomial. So I should say one more thing 
so that uh, actually if you, if you choose this, this there is an order difference between these two because these are now tabulated values the x i x j's are the tabulated zeros like the zeros of the legendary polynomial so this goes from 0 to k plus 1 k so that is of order k k plus 1 so I am using that polynomial uh, legendary polynomial here okay. so I can write this I do not go into the details here uh, of how we go from this to this but you can write the weight as uh, the weight at i of a of x i at as 2 divided by 1 minus x i square into the into the derivative of the k plus 1th order polynomial at x i divided at x i in square so now this is this is a form which you are going to use for this computation so once we know the the, the zeros and the corresponding weights okay, then we can just simply compute this sum and then we get the the integral okay so that is what something which you would uh, look at okay so now the question is how do I compute this uh, derivative okay, and how do I evaluate the function at various uh, uh, various points so how do I find the compute the weights is uh, is question and then how do I know the zeros of this polynomial okay so I said that I need the zeros of the legendary polynomial here okay as the to, that is where I am going to tab, tabulate it and I need the derivative of the legendary polynomial okay so now these two things are required to actually compute this quantity okay but remember both of those does not depend on the actual function value itself so once you can actually construct a table of this quantity and keep it and then you can use it for different values of the function okay the only thing is we have to change rescale the variables at every for different functions and different limits okay and that is the only thing which you have to change but this ai's and the and the xi's are independent of the function values okay so we can actually compute that okay so now the question is how do we evaluate the uh, the derivative and the and the zeros okay so to evaluate the zeros of course we will use we have seen their earlier methods we can use uh, something like uh, uh, newton raphson okay to find the zeros of the polynomial okay so if i know how to evaluate the derivative of the polynomial and then i can use newton raphson to use the i get the zeros of the polynomial so i just make a guess value for the zero and then i write uh, p of x plus delta x as p of x okay p being the polynomial of some order okay uh, plus p prime of x right uh, into uh, some delta into delta x and then I say that uh, this should be my 0 okay so then I get delta x as uh, uh, minus p of x divided by p prime of x right and then I add this and the next point would be so I would I start with a guess value for x and then I go in the next iteration as x plus delta x as my guess value and I repeat this quantity till the p goes to 0 so that is a Newton Raphson simple Newton Raphson scheme okay so I have all the tools I know the Newton Raphson to get the zeros of the polynomial right? and uh, uh, so one, once and if I know how to compute the derivative of the polynomial and how to evaluate the polynomial at that particular value of x then I can compute this integral here right okay because I can find the zeros using Newton Raphson and uh, but the only thing which I now need is the evaluation of the function p of x and its derivative and for that we again use uh, some properties of the legendary polynomial like the recursion relations which tells us that uh, j uh, the relation between the jth order polynomial and the the jth order polynomial and the j plus 1th order polynomial okay so the recursion relations connect uh, polynomials of different order okay, by a, a by a simple linear relation okay so that's that's what we're going to use okay so we're going to use the fact that uh, the recursion relation that j plus 1 in p j plus 1 is equal to uh, 2 j plus 1 times x p j uh, minus j p j minus 1. So that is what recursion relation is. So it connects the jth order polynomial with the j plus 1th order and the j minus 1th order polynomial. Okay, so that is that's, this is the relation which we can use and we know that p of 1 is 1 okay so that is also something which we will use okay. and then we will start from this and then compute at the any polynomial of any order you want at any value x okay so p of 1 is 1 for all x values so now if I want to evaluate polynomial uh, p 10 okay then I will start from p of 1 and then I will just keep on doing the recursion relation and, and I obtain the uh, I use the recursion relation to obtain the next higher order polynomial values okay that is one thing which I can use and then I have 
this relation that P j prime is given by j into x P j minus P j plus 1 uh, divided by x squared minus 1. So, this is another quantity which I can use. Okay. So, I have basically the recursion relation to compute the, the P values okay. and another recursion, another relation which connects the derivative of the jth order polynomial to the polynomial, the jth order polynomial and the j plus 1th order polynomial. Okay. So, and I know how this is connected to this through the recursion relation. So, I can actually compute all these quantities and then and once I have the P and the P prime, I can actually get the zeros of the polynomial and once I have the zeros of the polynomial and the derivative, I can compute the weights and once I have the weights, I can compute the, the integral. Okay. So, that is a whole scheme. Okay. So, now we will just see the implementation of this in a, in a program. Okay. So, that is slightly more complicated implement, uh, code. Okay, so now this is the this is the program here. Okay, so again, so the first part of this is the same that it actually asks you how many number of points you want, etc. And then this function uh, again allocates memory for different uh, functions like weights. Now we need to we need to store the weights and the weights and this x is the function values and xp is again the 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 values at which we have to tabulate the function. Okay, so once we have that, we can just call a program. So, now you see as I said this is independent of the function. right? So, the weights and the points at which it has to be tabulated is independent of the function. Okay. So, in the beginning of this program, okay, I just call a, a function another function called Gauss Legendre okay, and I supply the lower limit and the upper limit okay, and then that this program would then return to me the, the x values and the weights at the number of points which I have given. It, I, I asked the program to do it. So, what we need to actually find out is how do it computes the x and the w that is the, that's the points at which zeros of the polynomial and uh, rescale appropriately because I given the limits as this and then weights of the uh, of the uh, function at that. Okay. So, now if you know how to compute it at between minus 1 and plus 1 then we know uh, by simple scaling we know that we can write it as uh, uh, in this fashion this is the zeros of the polynomial then I know how where the function has to be evaluated by just simple a plus b by 2 minus a minus b by 2 into x t. So, that is not a that is not a big problem which we would find out is the zeros of the polynomial. Okay. So, that is the that is what this Gauss legendary actually does. Okay. So, I do the I do the computation of the zeros of the polynomial by simply using the uh, this uh, method that is this uh, Newton Raphson. Okay. So, first I have to evaluate p of x and then I have to evaluate p prime of x. So, p prime of x is given by that first I have to get the p of x. Okay. For for any order I have given, An order is what the number of points I am going to ask for it is. Okay, so if I, I say number of points is four, I have to do a fourth order Gauss Legendre. That's I need four points, etc. Okay. So now this is what this part is doing. So I just it has a simple guess value for the zero. Okay, so it has a guess value for the zero, which is cos of pi into i minus. Uh, this is the ith zero. Okay, ith zero is guessed as pi into i minus. 1 by 4 divided by n plus half is simply a good guess value where it actually works okay. and there are better methods of actually guessing the the zeros of a of a Legendre polynomial we will not go into those details. So, we make it some guess value of z okay. and then we come down and then uh, we just compute the now here. So, I am just saying p 1. So, I just start with p 1 equal to 1 that is that I know and I put p 2 equal to 0 which I do not know what it is. Okay. And so I just put p2 equal to zero. So p1 is one. That is something I know. That first order polynomial is one. Okay, and then p2 equal to zero. I start with and initialize p2 equal to zero, and then I compute as a in a loop for all the way up to n, where n is the number of points at which I want to now the order of the polynomial. Okay, that is the order of the polynomial is n. That is n points is taken as n here, and then I just use this recursion relation. So you can see the recursion relation here. Okay, so that's the recursion relation I'm using. So two times j minus one uh, into, into the the guess value x. Okay, so that is I'm using that that recursion relation which I've written down here to compute p j plus one from p j. Okay, so that's what I'm using here. Okay, so that recursion relation is used here to compute the uh, value, and I, I do this loop till this loop till I reach the order of the polynomial I want to evaluate. So n is the number of points I want to uh, uh, I want to 
evaluate the function n. Okay. So I do this till the order of the polynomial I reached and then I use this uh, uh, the, the derivative of the function here. So this is the derivative of the polynomial which is computed again using that formula which I have, which I have just written down. Okay. So I use this formula to compute the derivative of the polynomial because I already used the recursion relation to compute p1 and p2 let us say then I can get the p1 prime or if I use fourth order prime, I can get p4 prime from p4 and p5 okay. and I can compute p5 using this starting from p1 equal to 1 and using the recursion relation so that is all it is and then I improve on the z by using this uh, Newton Raphson here. So I compute z1 as z1 minus p1 by pp. So P p is the derivative and P1 is a function is the derivative is the polynomial of the desired order I wanted. Okay, I am just using P1, but it is a polynomial of the desired order I want because I have gone through this loop n times okay, in the recursion relation and I obtained the, the P1 is now my order of the polynomial I wanted to get and then I can use this to get my zeros. Okay, so now the zeros are tabulated here for different values okay, and, and the corresponding weights are then calculated using this formula that is 2 by 1 minus x i square into p prime. So once I get the p prime and the p this is pretty simple okay once I got the zeros and the function and the polynomial derivative in that in form okay then it is extremely simple I can write that down as the weights okay and then I this program just returns that that weight into the main program. Okay. So then I will just compute them as a and then I just so simply sum over the weight into the function evaluated at that x i values. Now, as I see that this xi values are actually rescaled by here, okay, I rescale them, okay. So xi values I get is actually values which are rescaled, okay. So x sum into the rescaled values, okay, that's what I'm getting. Okay. In the in the actual derivative, uh, in the actual interval a to b. So we just run this program now, okay. So g. Okay. So we'll just run uh, it between the limits. Uh, say, no, we'll just run a four point. Gauss Legendre. So we just run a four, four point and you can see that we get amazing accuracy. We get 0 0.80830 by just running a four point Gauss Legendre. So we could we could get even pretty good accuracy by three. So three to four is a tremendous improvement. So by four points we are getting a tremendous uh, improvement that is the actual value you remember is 0 0.080831. Okay, that is the actual value. We already got up to the sixth decimal place by just doing a four point Gauss Legendre. So you can see that this uh, method is the most accurate okay, provided you can tabulate your function the points at which you want to use. Okay. So we stop that here so you could actually compute this uh, yourself for different different functions and see how uh, that, that compare this uh, with uh, the Gauss Legendre with other met simpler methods and then and, co and compare the accuracy you obtain. In the next lecture, we will look at uh, uh, the how to solve uh, differential equations. The next step is to actually look at differential equations. So we'll look at that in the in the in the next lectures.